Hi everyone, Salima Ali Khan here. Welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna to be going over different types of watercolor paper and we're gonna get right into it. So actually it's very important that you know what you're getting when you use watercolor paper because it is about the marriage between the paint and the paper because what type of paper you have is what dramatically, dramatically affects the picture that you make. You may have heard that there are three types of watercolor paper that people usually use. And those are hot press, cold press, and rough. So let's go over what each of those mean. We're gonna do that first, and then we're gonna have a little demo to show you the difference between these types of paper. And I will be linking everything that I'm using in this video, I will be linking it down below. I use arches. I use arches almost exclusively for all of my watercolor paper I have for years and years. They are just such a great, reliable, wonderful brand. Um, they're obviously not sponsoring this video. It, I just have to say that Arches is such a, an amazing paper. Okay, so um, let's look at hot press. So hot press paper, I'm holding some right now, and you're not gonna be able to see it really, but it has no texture. It's incredibly smooth, very smooth to the touch. It just looks like, honestly, it looks like heavy cardstock. The next one we're gonna look at is cold press. Cold press does have some texture to it, and it's the nice little sweet spot between the extremes of hot press paper and rough paper. I use almost exclusively cold press, although I do love experimenting with the effects of rough and uh, hot press paper. Um, okay, so then we've got our rough paper. It is um, very, very textured, incredibly textured, grainy, grainy paper. Rough is designed to drink up the most water. It sounds funny to say, but it's a very thirsty paper. It just gobbles up that water. Uh, and you will see the effects, which are pretty cool, pretty dramatic. Um, um, okay, so this is the block that I usually buy. And then you'll see that it says 140 pounds. Okay, so just like there are three different types of watercolor paper, uh, the hot press, cold press, and rough, there are usually three different weights that they go by. So you'll have 90 pound paper, you'll have 140 pound paper, and you'll have 300 pound paper. It just means how thick the sheet is that you're gonna get. So obviously the 300 pound paper is gonna be the thickest sheet you can buy, and um, it absorbs the most water. So that's really what you're looking for. When you're looking for weight on watercolor paper, if you know you're gonna be dumping a ton of water and paint onto your paper and you need it to be able to take a lot of moisture, you obviously wanna go for 300 pound paper. So anyway, let's get to the fun part. We will get started painting. All right. All right, let's get going. So. First things first, um, I'm gonna be using the exact same paints and the exact same picture, basically, for each of these. So what we're gonna do is we're going to wet the page a little bit. What we're gonna do a really simple little like sunset type scene. So again, I don't usually use colors quite this primary, but I am for the purposes of this. So this is uh, Daniel Smith brand. That's the brand of watercolors I use. They are incredible. And if you're just starting out and starting to experiment with watercolors a little bit, I don't know that you need to go the whole hog and buy like a professional set. But if you are wanting a professional set because it does make a tremendous difference, um, student grade, between student grade and professional grade, I think it can make a very, a very big difference. Um, Daniel Smith is a very good choice. So here with a darker color, you can really kind of see already with the hot press paper. Um, look at this. Look at that. It like, look at the effect. It's crazy. This paper really does not want to drink the water. It, it I mean, I kind of think of it, it actively resists the water. Um, I mean, it even looks almost like the way when sometimes when you put water or um, on plastic or something, how it just does not absorb. And don't be fooled, it will absorb it eventually. It's just a little more reluctant to. It meaning it just doesn't blend, it doesn't drink in the paint. So therefore we get a very clean line up here, uh, which doesn't always happen. When you're painting wet and wet, which means what we just did, we wet the paper and we just put paint right on top of it. That does not always happen, but because it's hot press, it did happen this time. So what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna literally press in some blotches here, and we're gonna do that with the other styles of paper too so I can show you the difference. 
Okay, so we're just gonna add some texture. We're gonna pretend this is like a big grassy field. Okay, and then the primary color I wanna look at here is going to be a sort of a gorgeous, bloody sunset color. Bright orange. Let's get this going on here. And then you can kind of lighten it as it comes down, like start a little darker on the top. And you know what, while we're doing this, we already have some yellow at the top. Maybe I'll blot a little bit of it off. It's also harder to blot with cold, with um, hot press. And we'll get a little bit, it's a sliver of purple up here for the sunset to kind of show us the sunset. Okay, as you can see, you need to kind of get a lot of paint on the page. You'll notice that too. I feel like with hot press, sometimes you have to, you feel like you have to load your brush more to get the results. And also like, it's not as dark as I was thinking it might be. So then let's get some darker orange. So then let's do this. Let's think about some of these gorgeous bloody sunsets we've seen where we have these little clouds that, you know, this sort of just those long, long clouds that you'll see across the sky on a sunset. They almost look like boats or ships or something sometimes. Because I like to do my pictures very, very wet, or the background's very wet usually, I'm gonna wet this a little more. Maybe I'll bring in some purple clouds. And remember, I'm gonna have to sort of replicate this with the other types of paper, so I'm gonna have to remember what I'm doing here. But as you can already see, the little grassy parts below there and the green, those could look like little hills. You know, little foothills, things like that. Um, okay. Then the biggest thing I wanted to show you guys from this is if we do along the horizon line up here, I'm wetting the paper a little more now. If we do some trees. So I'm going back to that deep sap green and I am going up. Now, what's so interesting to me with these is I'm not really doing anything. Anyone can do this except just these long, you can almost see it like these almost look like the um, cypresses in Italy, you know, just those long tapered candle like trees and structures. So see, and then you've got some, remember that everything that's in your foreground or closer is going to be darker and have more contrast. Everything further away is going to be lighter and have less contrast. So, you know, bearing that in mind, these all look like they're relatively at the same level, but maybe we can change that up a little bit. So let's see here. Let's see what happens out of curiosity. If, for instance, so say those are our trees in the background. Say then we add more pigment here, or more water, sorry. More water. So we're getting, okay, ooh, look at this, look at this. Ooh, it's starting to bleed. How fun. Oh my God, so exciting. So exciting. It'll do it eventually. Hot press will get with the program eventually. It'll start cooperating. Um, and then you, what if we wanted to do just sort of in the foreground, wanted to kind of show a bit of a branch in the foreground, like just cut to kind of show that there is like maybe a, I don't know, a willow or something close to us in the foreground. We can do another branch maybe to show what that looks like. This is making me see hot press might be really good to do water because this almost looks like a wave. So just get some more dark. So then if we do something like this, we have to make very clear that it is in the foreground. Okay, nice. 
And you might not want to be someone who does something like this in the foreground. Sometimes when I do stuff like this, I look at it, I'm like, did I just ruin the picture? But, but, but for the purposes of this, I think it's good to show you guys. Um, okay. And as you notice too, a lot of the other types of paper, they will stay wet um, longer. So this feels like it's drying quickly, which is weird because you'd think hot press would stay um, wet longer just because it won't drink the paper as much, but it doesn't feel like it to me. It always feels like it's a bit, um, that it dries quickly. Okay, so then I'm just going to go back to the cadmium yellow medium, and I'm just going to, for the fun of it, I'm just going to stick a little more yellow in. I love this combo of sunset colors, guys. The yellow and the orange. I love it, love it, love it. Okay, so nice. And we're going to do this exact same thing in the other pictures. This is interesting. Note this because I'll, I'll have to, again, try to replicate it, but look at the sky here. So our purple, we did a while ago, so it was already a little bit dried. So when I streak the yellow across it, it adds a nice outline. And I don't know that we'll get that with the other types of paper. So nice. Okay, thanks for giving us such lovely effects, hot press paper. Sorry guys, I can't resist. I'm just gonna add a little more. This might be my not knowing when to stop syndrome, but I just wanted to see the time here. How long does it take to dry? What is, what can we expect from drying time? And then there's so much drama that you can add with dark versus light with these um, landscapes. Okay, guys, so anyone can do this. This was a very, very easy process to follow. You know, this almost looks like, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of this book that I had as a kid about, it was some period millions and millions of years ago on which dinosaurs walked the earth, and they were talking about the primordial landscape. And it was just so untamed and wild, and so many of these shapes they were guessing at were just like these formless amorphous shapes. I feel like hot pressed paper would be really good for that. I mean, look at this sort of jungle-like primordial feel. Okay, that's what we're going to tell ourselves. The hot press is the sort of dinosaur version of this. All right, we're going to take this off and we are going to get started with the cold press is next. All right, guys, here we go with this one. So this is Cold press, 140 pound paper. Wet the page. Let me do the purple. I'm gonna do the purple across the top of the sky first. So this is the same amount of purple I was using on the hot press page, um, but because this paper has more texture and is thicker and drinks the paint in more, you just get a more brilliant, you get more paint. So let's add our yellow. So I'm gonna to try to make it so that the yellow doesn't bleed too, too much with the purple. So this is what I mean with a, by a bleed. Like these two blending into each other, drinking each other up, that's a bleed. When paint, essentially a bleed is just when paint spreads on the paper, that's all. It's just a fancy way of saying that. So again, how interesting is this, that the way it bleeds in, um, you just get much more of a spread of color. You don't get the same specificity that we got with the hot press. It seems like it's staying wet a lot longer. If we add sort of our long, let's call them the ship clouds, S-H-I-P is in Paul, ship clouds, because they look like sh fleets of ships to me always. So see, they're not as specific. You know, when I really, really emphasize, um, they are. Okay, so back to our deep sap green, which I love that foresty color of it. Oh my gosh, look at this bleed. I just love watercolor bleeds. I mean, they look like so many things. They look like snowflakes, like fractals, like... um 
I mean, just veins, you know, neurons, you can, you can get really crazy with what you could turn these into all from just dumping some watercolor on some wet paper. So look at this, look how different that is from the hot press. So let's do the same thing. We're just going to blot some color onto here. See what that ends up looking like with watercolor. You have to be patient. So let's see what these trees look like. Let's do the same thing. We'll do those big old long candle Tuscany cypress trees. Not a very straight tree, but gets the point across. Okay, look at that. We'll do some with less paint on them to indicate that they are in the background, so they are more faded. Then we'll load the brush and do some to indicate they're more in the foreground. Now with these, the really cool thing is, look, when you have paper that is more textured and will drink the um, paint and it spreads and bleeds more, these just look like leaves. They can really approximate leaves more easily. So there's a lot of things you don't have to add. The, the paint will kind of, and the paper, the marriage of the two will sort of do it for you. But look how different this is. It is so, so different. And I don't honestly at this point have a favorite between the two. But we're doing the same things here. It is so, so different. And I don't honestly at this point have a favorite between the two. But we're doing the same things here. We're just adding the same types of things. Um, we, had, we did not get, notice with the hot press, we had that nice clean horizon line. We had that, there was no bleed on the horizon. Here we clearly have a, a, a bleed. So that evokes a different feeling all on its own. It evokes like a misty day. Um, let's see what happens when we try to, first of all, let's do our little yellow clouds. Let's see what happens when we add that. That was an important part of the other picture. Ooh, oh, 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 look how nice that bleeds. Oh my God. That bleeds like crazy. Gorgeous. Oh my God, that is a fat cloud. I did not intend that cloud to be quite so bulbous at all. But that's what it became. Um, okay, and then we did some really nice little yellow clouds up in the... I'm not sure, honestly, let's be real. I don't know if I'm loving the effect that I could be very liberal with the paint and with what I was doing with the hot press because I knew it wasn't going to bleed quite like this. Whereas this, this is really, really kind of over the top. And I'm kind of wishing I had back before I started adding all this yellow, I'm wishing I had back that muted quality that I had before. So maybe that's something to bear in mind. If we're using cold press, start small because you know it's going to bleed and you know the colors are going to be bright. Um, okay. Now I, now I feel compelled to add some orange back in. Let's see if that ends up messing it up further or, okay. Yeah. Could be worse. Could be worse. Um, okay. Let's add that sort of swampy branch in the foreground that we have in the other picture too. Let's see how that goes. I'm very curious. So I basically just did a big old bow with some weeping willow, almost like Spanish moss hanging things to indicate the foreground. I don't know if you can tell or if that looks right now as if it's in the foreground. I think it may have been too early to do that on this page because remember it takes it takes textured paper or the, the um, yeah, it takes it longer to dry. So I don't know that the intention is clear. Maybe if I'd waited a little longer um, let's do one up here doing, trying to do the exact same thing. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I don't know if that effect is, if it's doing what I want it to be doing, but another fun thing you can do, which we did do in the other one is once it's already drying, just a wet brush, just press a wet brush on there. The water will bleed against the paint and create some cool effects. They're different than the ones we have in hot press, for sure. For sure. I'm trying to create some more muted quality. How interesting is this? So what's so interesting to me is that with the hot press, it looked to me very clearly like a certain type of landscape. This is obviously much more impressionistic. 
much more um, dreamlike, honestly. You're less able to pin down exactly what's going on. I don't hate it. I don't hate it, but it's definitely different. Um, very curious to see what's going to happen with the rough paper. Look at that. Now I'm just like compelled to try to create a bunch of little bulbous, um, <coughs> bless me. Sorry. Okay. Let's try to think. Oh, last thing I had on the other page was we did add a little more purple back in. Uh oh, are you telling me you're dry now and now you don't want to spread and bleed? Okay, let's add a little bit of purple in. We just had a few, few to add some texture. Okay. How interesting. How interesting. And this would be a good experiment. See, so now look, we did we did that um foreground branch too early. It was too wet still, because now you can't discern at all that you wanted a branch in the beginning there. Whereas the hot press that stayed clear from the get-go. So, all right. Well, thank you, cold press paper. You definitely created a very dreamlike scene, a very fairy tale-ish scene. It's fun, guys. Now, now it's, I'm liking it now. Now I feel like I'm walking through a like, I don't know, fantasy land and I've arrived somewhere. And this is like, you know, Narnia. Remember in the last battle, the worlds within worlds within worlds or Narnia within Narnia. All right, guys. Okay. We are putting this aside and we are going to do the rough. Okay, guys, I'm so excited. Let's see how rough performs. Okay, so it's wet. All right, now this is like I'm doing more than I did the hot press because I forgot to put the sliver of purple on the top first. So why don't we do that now? Okay, so now I'm going to take a little bit of purple and I'm going to put it on the top first. And then I'm going to take a little bit of purple and I'm going to put it on the top first. And then I'm going to take a little bit of purple and I'm going to put it on the top first. And then I'm going to take a little bit of purple and I'm going to put it on the top first. And then I'm going to take a little bit of purple and I'm going to put it on the top first. And then I'm going to take a little bit of purple and I'm going to put it on the top Actually, it's interesting. It's not, it doesn't feel quite as brilliant. Maybe because I had the yellow down first. I don't know. But this is interesting. I'm almost tempted to blot. This is just called blotting, guys. And actually, a lot of artists use this for, to actually paint, like to make effects with it. Um, just taking a paper towel and blotting up excess paint. Let's add some orange. Woo. Okay, so... You definitely get the bright colors with rough. I'm not using any less, any less paint than before, but it is a muted quality. That's very interesting to know, right? I guess because this is such thirsty paper, it drinks up the paint so quickly and so dramatically that you need more of it to convey the brightness. So I did, I just loaded up a bunch of yellow. So we're gonna go down to the horizon with it. What was interesting about the hot press is it did not drink up the yellow. So by the time we got to the horizon, it was almost like, it was very pale. Um, okay, so let's do our grass. Oh my gosh, guys, look at these bleeds. These are big old puffer bleeds. <gasps> oh my goodness. This is such good information. Oh my God, look, wow. <gasps> Just rivers and rivers of, this would actually be a good effect. Also, honestly, a good effect for some kind of primordial forest. It look, I mean, it is just falling. I hate to even, I don't even want to mess with this over here because it almost looks like a, like a willow or I don't know, some sort of windy, I am not a green thumb plant person, but almost like a wisteria, like some kind of windy plant. All right. Interestingly, yes. So this, even more than the cold press, is just very ambiguous, very dreamlike, very just loose and fuzzy. Um, obviously, this paper takes longer to dry because it is just soaking up the paint. 
super thirsty. But while it's all wet, let's do our trees while it's all wet. I'm going to go back and do the clouds in a minute. So what I'm really interested in is the trees. Let's see what this is going to look like. Nice Tuscany um, cypresses. The paper, I mean, it is taped down, but it's already buckling. That's how. Oh, and look, look how beautiful that is. Like, look at the leaves that are already sort of you know, branching off, like bleeding off this tree. I don't know how realistic the shape of that tree is. That'd be kind of a weird tree, but you know, for our purposes, it works. And it's partly because this paper is buckling like crazy. I'm liking this effect, guys. I really am. I feel like this is, I don't know, also some kind of fairy tale. So they're coming across some kind of portal, some kind of door. It's a dream state. Again, it feels almost more like that than the cold press, honestly. Oh, I love it as it is. Isn't that interesting? I love it as it is. If I weren't committed to sort of doing the exact same thing on each paper, I would leave it. Um, leave it just as it is right now. Let's see what else we can do with this. Let's give the ground a little more texture here. I'm going to let it dry for just a minute. Oh my God, look at this gorgeous. This just these bleeds. Oh, I love that distant forest feel, guys. I live in Austin. We don't have trees like this. Now when I see them online or anywhere, they look like the most exotic things to me on earth. Just normal trees. Um, okay, so let us, let's do the little orange clouds now. Okay, interesting, interesting. Okay. Wow. All right. So it drank that up quick, quick enough that we're getting very, ooh, 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 ooh. I just added a little bit of water to the brush and that's what happened, which is a nice effect. Look at that. Note that if you want to make yourself some clouds, you could just feasibly draw the color of the sky you like, and then just clean your brush. And with only water, just dump some water on there and let it bleed out like this. Maybe we'll do um, a separate video on clouds at some point. There's many ways you can sort of go about it, but these are just the fleets of ship clouds. Let's see how this pans out. Okay. Um, I liked it muted before too, so let's add some yellow. And it really drank up the purple so quickly. One nice way, it's interesting, the one nice way we're getting more purple contrast is if I just add water to the sky. And you know, you learn as you're working with different papers, you're learning what works with one and not with the other. So right now I'm sort of just realizing that um, adding just water alone, ooh, look at this. This is not the effect everybody would want, but it's definitely one to note. Definitely could be like a storm sky or something. This sort of strange pattern in the clouds. It really does. Doesn't it look like a UFO, guys? That's what it is. This is Close Encounters. This is when she's in her little farmhouse in the Midwest. And the first UFO just sort of emerges from the clouds. That's exactly what this looks like to me. So this is gonna be our UFO picture. And it was such a peaceful, idyllic pastoral scene until the UFO came around. So this is what we mean by artists having to adapt. So this is interesting. I will be honest, I will say this is not my favorite type of sky at all. And I should have waited probably. So good lesson for rough paper, let it dry a bit before you launch headfirst into sort of doing your little, the details you want to add, unless you like this. Cause again, I think if you're using it properly, if you're, or intentionally, I should say, you could use it to great effect. I'm adding some purple here just to, I'm not even sure why, but just to balance out some of the, some of the craziness of the sky below. Now I'm wishing, because I loved when the emphasis, also remember guys, when you shift emphasis, meaning whether it's, it's brightness, whether it's contrast, 
from one part of a picture to another, it'll change the picture. So I really did like when the contrast was on the trees, or I'm sorry, the emphasis was on the trees because they were just so innocent and dreamy and I loved it. But then when I went up and started messing with the clouds, the orange clouds, obviously that was so dramatic and intense. It draws the eye away from the trees and to the clouds. So maybe we're salvaging it a little bit, just adding a little bit of light orange down here, a gradual, like sunsets do. I mean, how amazing are sunsets? Just these blankets of color and these gradients and how a lot of sunsets do this where they gradually ripple um, from one color to the next and often it fades. I love it. Honestly, I love everything except this UFO piece that seems determined determined to make an appearance. If I ever want to do an alien spacecraft picture, I will be turning to rough paper. But this is cool. I mean, look, so we added a little bit of purple and it bled so much that now it almost looks like that. I think people call it godlight, like where the rays come through the clouds and down. Should we exploit that a little? Maybe we can. Maybe we can exploit that a little. Now it looks like a sea urchin is falling from the sky. Rough paper is temperamental. I kind of like it. I think it's a challenge that people take upon themselves. Um, and it is. It's a very, very different type of painting. I tend to like to be meticulous. I am very... This is why it took me so long to learn to like watercolors in the first place because I was such a pencil and pen and ink artist because I'm so... You know, I'm not usually a, a huge fan of impressionism even. I love it, just detail. and But it is very good to work outside of our comfort zone and practice other things, um, things that are not our forte, because you always, always, always learn something. All right, I'm doing this so it doesn't look like the clouds are in front of the trees, because this picture is already pretty surreal. Okay. So now, so yeah, I don't, I don't hate it. It's definitely um, growing on me a little bit. Okay, so now I'm kind of scared. Let's see what happens when we add the branch in the front. Okay, nothing disastrous so far. Okay, okay, nice. Okay, so all it was about was just about waiting. So it was a little drier. Which I should have done with the cold press too. Okay. Very interesting. Very interesting, this phenomenon with rough paper. Okay, there we go. All right. So again, now that I'm wanting it to bleed a little more, it's actually not. Maybe it's because the paper's saturated. I think the paper has just had it. It's just at capacity for what it can soak up. But this is cool. So this is almost so impressionistic. You could look at it from a ways away and just wonder what the heck it is. And then look, honestly, this looks like a sea urchin or like a Muppet, a new purple Muppet falling from the sky. Uh, I love it. This is so interesting. The difference, guys, it's really interesting. Okay, so that is it for our rough. Okay guys, so let's look at our finished products. We've got, this is our hot press page. So this one is the one I was thinking of as like a primordial jungle. And then we've got over here, we've got our cold press. Isn't that amazing, the difference between the two? two? We did the exact same thing with both of those. Then over here we've got the rough which didn't turn out bad. Um, honestly, that this thing up here doesn't look too much like a Muppet anymore. So the rough was fun. Yeah, just very thirsty paper that drank it all up, but I really like the colors. I like that these colors stayed bright and dark. Hope that was helpful. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next week. Thanks. Bye.